Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 92nd session of INITIATIVE, the National Initiative to Strengthen Collaboration Between HIV and TB Through E-Learning. And uh, I welcome all the ART centers from AP, Tamil Nadu, all the Northeastern states, Delhi, UP, and West Bengal for joining us for this session today. So with this uh, apologies, I request Dr. Anradha to kindly introduce our guest for the day, our expert guest, Dr. Munjal, who is unit in charge and senior chest physician at National Institute of TB and Respiratory Disease and has decades, I should say at least three, three and a half decades of experience in uh, TB, TB drugs, their side effects, how to make regimens, what to give, when what not to give. So it is a rare opportunity to get such a senior chest physician or a TB physician to speak on this forum. Uh, welcome, sir. And Anuradha, can I please request you also to welcome, sir? Welcome, sir. And thank you so much for joining again. Thank Thanks you. a lot. So Anuradha, we all know, is our technical logistics partner. Then we would have Rakesh from Share India and we have Prateek from Echo India. Uh, Ma'am, we have Ankur and we Ankur. Have... So we have Ankur from uh, Echo India. Uh, welcome, team. And uh, now I would like to introduce the speaker for the, uh, the case presenter for the day. The case presenter for the day is uh, Dr. B.A. Varaprasad from ART Center from West Kodabri District, Andhra Pradesh. So welcome, sir. Dr. Prasad, welcome. And we also have Dr. Bhanu Nayak, the DTO from the same district who would also be co-presenting with Dr. Uh, B.A. Varaprasad. So welcome, sir, and I request all of you to kindly, this is a very important session about side effects, about rashes, which is actually a frequent problem that we see in our ART centers. Ever since we have started managing TB totally on ourselves, and with this, can I request uh, Dr. B.A. Varaprasad, SMO of the ART center at Tadi Paligudev, Andhra Pradesh, to kindly make his case presentation. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon. I am Dr. B.A. Prasad, SMO Thadabal Gudam. I am presenting a case of hypersensitivity reaction to anti tuberculosis drugs. ERT number 7012, female age 56 years, weight 55 kgs. Date of ERT registration 36 2008. Date of ERT initiation 36 2008. Date of TB confirmation 94 2022. Date of ATT initiation 13 2022. Clinically diagnosed extra pulmonary TB. Past history of TB, yes. Date of IBT completion, 15 5, 2020. Patient on ERT since June 2008 with more than 95 percent adherence. Initiated on ERT to ZLG, switched to ZLN, March 2009. On 15th November 2010, SLN due to Zidavid and Tax Free. On 6 3 2013, TLN because of new drug availability and the program. And 5 11 2014, TLG, new drug availability under the program. And 7 11 2020, first line TLD, comprovide changes. She was diagnosed with extra pulmonary, clinically diagnosed with TB on 9 4 2022. Multiple analogic lymph nodes in right axillary region and ultrasound to get it, uh, FNAC from right axillary lymph node. Smears are cellular and show plenty of lymphocytes, histiocytes, neutrophils. And plasma cells. Background shows focus of from the cases necrosis and nuclear debris. Pushes are suggestive of tuberculous respiratory Sputum, CV net not detected. X ray chest, body XIV is normal with LV configuration. And for unfolding of the the rest of it is normal. Hypertensive patient, BP well controlled with detonal with TMG OD, extra BTD. 4 MBC, 4 bills per day. She developed a grade 4 reaction in 10 days, managed with steroids and anti -historical. All drugs are stopped. Later, INH preservative Itagular was given. She developed a grade 2 rash within 24 hours. After 5 days, the anti -historical. patient is given a choice of selecting the individual drugs which she thinks will suit to her to gain her confidence. She selected first INH, later preservative, and slowly increasing doses. No reaction. After that, the of the TMD single tablet is given. Patient developed a yes, gas sensation all over the body, which saturated with anti Finally, on 25 5, 2022, she is given duoflaxin 
there is a noid iron combination since then there is no reaction after the ATP here again 5 kg is CD4 count at air initiation 224 uh, CD4 count 610 2021 896 285 2022 954 viral load 610 2021 target not detected 285 2022 thousand and thirteen copies for ML investigation 285 2022 direct reaction 0.44 0.7 RPS 79, HB 9.0. CPLAB not directed, X ray, cardiac surgery is normal, the delivery configuration and folding of the rest is normal. ERP regimen, TLD first line, KTD regimen, two of in present mind, nine inch combination, CPT, yes, other medicine, it is not 50 mg OD. Now, the patient says she had a bad time with ADT last time. Only after she had a bad reaction, after the second time also. For that, it shows the recipe of asking how it should wear it during the past TV episode and treatment. We are planning an intensive phase of duoplaxin phase 1 IH combination for 3 months and continuous phase of duoplaxin IH combination for 6 months. We request your guidance and expert opinion in this matter. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prasad. And that is actually a very, very nicely worked up case, a very well managed case also, I would say. And I had, as I had already uh, summarized it the last time, I'll go over the summary really fast this time because I want to leave more time for Dr. Munjal to discuss this case. So this is a case of a 56 year old female person living with HIV and she was registered in 2008. That means she has been in the system of ART nearly, for nearly 12 years. And when she presented to us, she had a CD4 of 224 in 2008. And that was the time when her ART was started. And it was appropriately changed according to the changing guidelines of ART. And currently, the patient is on TLD. This patient also received IPT as per guidelines for six months. And her, she finished her IPT in May 2020. However, despite her IPT, she developed tuberculosis and that was extra pulmonary tuberculosis of a peripheral lymph node, the right axillary lymph node, which was diagnosed as TB based on the histopathology, the uh, fine needle cytology examination, which was highly suggestive of tuberculosis. Though we do not have a CBNAT of FNA, we have a CBNAT of the sputum, which was negative, X-ray was normal. LFT, KFT, random blood sugar, HP was acceptable limits. And the patient had no diabetes. She was a hypertensive on Atten and her blood pressure was well controlled. Now the story begins with the start of ATT. She was started ATT for her peripheral lymph node extrapulmonary tuberculosis on 13th April 2022. She was given four drugs of the 4-FDC as per her weight, which was sorry, four pills of 4-FDC, she was 55 kg weight, so she was appropriately given a, a four tablets of the 4-FDC. But what happened uh, 10 days later, the patient developed a skin eruption. She developed a severe skin rash, which uh, the presenter and their center labeled as grade four. So they stopped all the drugs and managed the patient with corticosteroids and antihistaminic. After that, they introduced uh, the patient was again introduced with the uh, INH plus parazinamide plus ethambutol. However, 24 hours again, they had a grade 2 rash. And after stopping and the, when the person stabilized, this time they decided to add drugs one by one. They first added H, that is INH, then parazinamide. And then as soon as it added rifampicin, Again, the patient had a sensation of ants crawling all over her body, which is basically a type of itching. So rifampicin was taken away and the patient was kept on ZNH and patient was given LZH because it, from the earlier HZD, they had not tried ethambutol and that is probably what had caused the rash. So they took INH and Z from uh, HZD. R could not work because again, they had side effects. So it became HL, XZL. So they plan to give uh, LZH, L is levofloxacin in the intensive phase. And they expect a continuation phase with levofloxacin and INH. 
the duration of which would be discussed and whether whatever what other regimen could have been used however till now they have got a good response from the patient and she is seen to gain weight her cd4 is 896 and viral load was undetectable and the cd4 actually may 22 was also 954 so it seems that immunologically we are on track and now uh, it is to be seen what more can be done as or as our ddt and the skin rashes are concerned so with this brief summary i will open it to the house would anybody want to ask anything from the presenter comment from dr uh, mahendra shukla from dptc balampur he says that please send first line and second line lpa for confirmation of inh and levo susceptibility point noted sir and we will ask dr munjal to discuss it during his presentation another question that is being asked is was fnac aspirate sent for cbnac and as per the information available it could not be sent for cbnac due to some reason but i totally agree with the medical officer at tirupati that fine needle aspirate is a very good sample for cbnac and if possible whenever possible we should try to send it so with these comments i transfer the mic to dr sushil manjal senior tb physician from national institute of tb and respiratory diseases and request him to give his talk and to give his expert comments on how best to manage this patient over to manjal sir uh good afternoon uh this is a very interesting case uh, presentation where the patient developed a hypersensitive skin reaction uh, along with that he developed other reaction also probably with rifampicin he was not having any skin reaction he was having a some other kind of adverse event unrelated with the skin so both the reaction can occur we know in allopathy there is always a risk of some adverse event with the any drug even a simple drug like crocine or paracetamol can give you a lot of effect also and lot of side effect also everything depends on the risk benefit ratio whenever we are choosing a regimen we always think that how much benefit will be to the to the patient and how much these drugs will cause harm to the patient all the att all the tb drugs are potential harmful they can give a reaction without even before starting treatment no doctor can predict that all patient will able to tolerate the all the medicines so we are mentally prepared and it's our duty that we should prepare the patient also for the adverse event or the side effect kyunki allopathy mein sabse badi badnami hui yahi hai ki log allopathy kyon nahi khate ki garam hoti hai side effect dete people have a lot of myth about the allopathy medicines are they are hot medicine they give a lot of trouble so you have to break that myth also i will just cover this topic and whenever needed you can ask me any question in between also please start next so this is a summary which apasta has already covered we are not going to talk about the art and why the art was changed you are all expert because you are dealing with the art we will talk about the only tuberculosis believe me after tb specialists art center are the second best centers to treat tuberculosis because they are seeing a lot of tb uh, tb patients and probably they are seeing more side effect with tb medication as compared to other tb clinics the reason is the patients are on art they are already immunocompromised so the challenge with you people is more than a tb specialist in this case dr shukla has rightly pointed out the cbna report was negative in a immune compromise host especially extrapulmonary tuberculosis cbna may be negative and we can start the att on a based on a clinical response right mdr tuberculosis and uh, leucoplasma resistant in extrapulmonary tuberculosis is not so common so in the routine guideline we don't go for uh, lpa for leucoplasma in this patient we diagnosed the patient in april and very rightly we started the treatment within two weeks and we started with the recommendation now the recommendation is fit drug combination this is again a little bit a tricky issue because around if you will talk about 5 6 year back there was no adc then we used to get kit 
and with the kit the things to manage the adverse event was much easier because the drugs were separately packed in this case all the drugs are contained in a single tablet so you if the patient develop a reaction with the fdcs it's almost impossible to predict which drug is causing the reaction so whenever some reaction occur we have to abandon fdc immediately and we have to shift to the individual drug this provision is there in the guidelines of national tb control program so we are going to discuss because believe me this is such a huge topic it's impossible to discuss everything within 20 minutes but we will talk about the guidance on the hypersensitivity reaction to att drugs we will just fix to the guidance what the guidelines say how to handle a hypersensitivity to the att drugs how to proceed in a patient who are hypersensitive to att drugs and to discuss various toxicity and modified att regime in case of hypersensitivity before starting any topic or anything we should know what we understand by the adverse cutaneous reaction because this is our main stay we are not going to discuss much about hepatitis we are not going to discuss about the much about peripheral neuropathy or ocular toxicity or uh, vestibular toxicity with the drugs we are mainly focusing on the skin reactions if you go to the definition any desirable change in the structure or function of the skin skin mein koi bhi change aayega so that will be called as a adverse cutaneous reaction but the thing is that it has to be followed by some drug some drug has to be taken only when the reaction occurs then we will call it as a adverse cutaneous reaction any desirable change in the structure or function of the skin its appendages including mucous membrane even the nails and its and compass all adverse even related to drug reaction regardless of the etiology due to the drug drug hypersensitivity reaction if you go by the data cutaneous adverse drug reaction to the first line att is present in around 5.7% of tb patient this was the question and majority of the you people have answered this question very rightly but there are more chances if we are using fixed dose combination and if we are using att along with the ait there are more chances of drug hypersensitivity reaction they are more in elderly they are more in females maybe due to the hormones this is a female patient so female patient are more prone to get drug hypersensitivity reaction diabetic organ failure if the patient is having a liver or renal failure if the patient is on polypharmacy the probability is very high if the patient is taking art drugs <coughs> infections because these infection are more common in immunocompromised those epstein b virus hematological malignancies autoimmune diseases the adverse drug hypersensitivity reactions are more the etiology is many it may be immunological it can be non immunological also immunological mean probably patient is exposed to a drug and it react heptans are the protein where the drugs combine because the drugs are the very uh, tiny molecules sometimes they combine with the heptan and cause a reaction and sometimes it's a interaction with the immune receptor hypothesis these are the different kind of uh, skin reaction which are showing in this slide the most common is maculo papular rash you can see on the left side this is the maculo papular rash and uh, the other two are other three are articular lignite rash it's a known as rash syndrome drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms and the third slide is showing agep acute generalized exanthematous partialosis and exfoliated dermatitis was very common initially with att drugs especially when we were using the thiazolazone now thiazolazone is out from the national tb program when i was a tg student it was a part of national tb program and we used to see you are seeing the last patient where the exfoliated dermatitis used to occur and the mortality in this kind of patient was very very high that was the only reason thiazolazone has been removed from the national program it it is still a very effective drug it was very cheap drug it was a backbone of national tb control drug at one time but it was removed only due to the side effect look at the streptomycin uh 3 4 years back it was a backbone of national tb control program anybody with recurrent tuberculosis used to be given streptomycin now the streptomycin has been taken away not due to its efficacy because believe me it's a still a wonderful drug but it has been removed due to its 
side effect of autotoxicity and vestibular toxicity. Autotoxicity sometimes become very annoying for the patient. If the patient is fine and if he loses his hearing power, you can imagine how the patient will react. So these medicine has been removed from the natural program, not due to their effectiveness. They have been removed due to their reactions. Dress, drug reaction with eosinophilia and systemic symptoms has been, uh, diagnostic criteria has been given, which are known as Registar uh, criteria. There are indication of hospitalization. If there is an acute rash, fever above than 38, and large lymph nodes at two minimum sites, involvement of at least one internal organ, blood count abnormalities, lymphocyte above or below normal limit, and eosinophilia above the laboratory limit. If the three criteria are present, then the patient needs to be hospitalized. Again, grading of the skin, allergic skin reaction is very important because uh, they have mentioned type 4, 4 for the degree. So you should know because the classification has been given. The first degree is if there is a moderate itching or ready rash less than a body, 10% of the body surface area. If the reaction involves less than 10% of body surface area, we will call it a first degree. If it's around 10 to 30 percent, we will call it a second degree. Third degree is a papular vascular wet rash is more than 30 percent of the body surface area is involved. The patient may be having a purpura skin or mucosa ulcer. Fourth degree, if there is a bullous lesion, Stephen Johnson syndrome, or a skin necrosis. How to manage this kind of reaction? Believe me, if you are using ATT drugs, you are going to see these kind of reactions. And there is no need to get panic, right? You have to manage them even as a primary physician. Even you are an ART expert, but still you have to manage this kind of side effect because they are so frequently common, they can occur to any patient. You can't predict that this patient will not have a skin reaction or this patient will have a skin reaction. Allergic reaction without rash, you need to give a symptomatic treatment with diphenhydramine or any other antihistamine you can use, cetrizine, depending on your availability. Because if you go into the detail analysis, which antihistaminic is better, cetrazine is better, or fexofenadine is better, or bilastin is better, there is no end to it, right? But the thing is that if you are using fexofenadine, which is commonly known as Allegra also, you have to use in 180 milligram because two strengths are available, 120 and 180. Just remember this thing, because we are wanted to prevent the skin reaction, skin is whole body surface area. So we have to use the higher dose. If the person is having an allergy to the nose, then we are going to use fexofenadine in 120 milligram lower doses, right? When we are dealing with the skin, we need to go for a higher dose, not some other technical reason. The only reason is surface area of the skin is more than the nose, because in nose, we need to act on a very small area. And if you want to give antihistaminic, because if the patient is having a very mild reaction, say less than 10%, it's better to give before taking the ATT. Corticosteroid ointment or oral prednisone can be added if there is no improvement with the antihistamine. Because if the patient develops a skin reaction, the first issue is you have to reduce his anxiety, we have to give a symptomatic improvement. And second part is we have to introduce the ATT drugs. And before introducing the ATT drugs, we have to identify the culprit drugs. So the main job is give the patient symptomatic improvement and try to identify the culprit drug and how to handle it. Allergy reaction with rash, stop ATT, and reintroduce the drugs one and one from the least common to the most common cause of cutaneous reaction. It's a total blind game. There is no fixed formula, but if you will go the frequency, I, I will repeat that any drug, any first line drug can give up skin reaction, right? <coughs> Don't presume that this drug will not give a reaction or this drug will give reaction. Even somebody will say that, oh, this drug is absolutely safe, hardly cause any reaction. But for that patient, even 1% will be that drug and he, for him it will be 100%. If you go by the available data, out of the all first-line drugs, a thambutol gives maximum cutaneous adverse reaction, followed by the pyrazinamide, rifampicin, and isoniazid. 
believe me i am talking about the cutaneous adverse reaction i am not talking about the hepatitis or some other kind of reaction for other kind of reaction this sequence may be different right streptomycin is maximum but we are not using it it is out from the national tb control program due to the adverse event only because it gives skin reaction as well as it gives vestibular and ocular toxicity right pas was initially first line drug it has been removed so again i am emphasizing it because drugs are not removed due to the efficacy they have been removed due to their adverse event if the patient will develop a reaction to a drug he will not take the drug he will lose the confidence in your system your allopathy system and your system also so it's our job to handle all the adverse event effectively latent period generally the drug reaction occur between 3 to 150 days so believe me the reaction can occur within 3 days and even it can occur after 150 days after 5 uh, months also mean average is 33 days most of the reaction occur within intensive phase so we have to if the reaction occur we have to go for a oral provocation test we have to reintroduce the atd one by one new drug is reintroduced every 96 hours and 90% of the really can a reaction occur within 72 hours of the challenge order of reintroduction is isoniazid first we will introduce 50 then 150 then 300 rifampicin 75 300 and then give full dose paracetamol 250 and the followed by 1 g and full dose ethambutol 100 500 of full dose you can take it as a 400 also because in india the strength available is 400 800 septomycin there is no point discussing because we are not using it desensitization should be done if hepatitis still continues after challenge if you are still adding the drugs and the patient is still showing the reaction right and if you think as a physician that this drug is must for the patient only then we will go for a desensitization so we will make the patient adopt to the drug believe me this is a very tedious process right as a primary level i will not advise that you should venture into this kind of thing but as a knowledge that you should know that we can have this option where the desensitization to a drug can be tried you have to start with the 100 or 1000 dose for the first day give a double dose every hour so it means you have to sit with the patient for hours together or patient has to be admitted until the therapeutic dose is reaches reach you are not sure whether it will be reached or not once the therapeutic dose is reached continue giving divided doses for three days then change to a single dose so for atd you have to repeat this process right if there two drugs are suspected or two drugs are involved this is a tedious process so we best thing is that if you know that this drug is giving a skin reaction just omit that drug that is the best remedy this is if the culprit drug is rifampicin you can give two month isoniazid paracetamol ethambutol followed by 10 month of inh and ethambutol if it is culprit drug is isoniazid you can give 6 to 9 month of rifampicin paracetamol ethambutol regimen if you think that the culprit drug is paracetamol you can use 9 month of inh rifampicin and ethambutol and if you think that culprit drug is rifampicin isoniazid both you can use 80 to 24 month of septomycin ethambutol or fluoroquinolone believe me generally the drug reaction occur with one drug or maximum with the two drug it's almost rare to see drug reaction with the more than two drugs so i will go into now other uh, toxicity of the drugs it's difficult to determine and measure toxicity of a particular drug since anti tb drugs are administered in a combination at as you know ftc all the drugs in the single tablet so in ftc there is a 50% probability of an adverse effect right so you can just imagine how much is the risk of getting a adverse event i am not talking about skin now now i am just talking about the overall adverse effect minor side effects are very common serious reactions are rare believe me they are very rare very rarely we need to stop the medication but every but they require a vigilance we all know that if the we will not able to manage the side effect then the patient will not stick to the medicine and if the patient will not stick to the medicine it will lead to lot of other problem like md or hcr tuberculosis compliance is a big issue in tuberculosis 
one of the reason why i still we are not able to control tuberculosis all over india is spite of having the wonderful drugs for the so many years the only reason is patient become non compliant and the reason for non compliance is side effect and we as a physician know that side effects are bound to happen probably the proper management of side effect is not given to the patient that's why he default with the medicine so community health worker and dot animal close surveillance for the adverse event this is our responsibility first line drugs you all know that isonia the defepsin paracetamol is hamutal of the first drugs second line drugs we are used as we use bedalafine delaminate cyclostane fluoroquinolone thiamides and amino like i said we are not going to discuss believe me they have more side effect than the first line drugs isoniazid side effects are present in around 5 to 5 5 to 6 percent of cases hepatitis is the most common side effect it occurs in 10 to 20 percent and majority it is asymptomatic right out of 100 only 10 will progress to symptomatic hepatitis and out of these 10 10 percent will going to fulminate hepatic failure so chances of getting hepatic failure with isoniazid is almost like a reality but it is there right ionic related hepatitis greatly associated with the increasing age excessive alcohol consumption iv drug use women in postpartum period history of previous drug use and for this the periodic lft is required if the sgot or sgpt level go to more than 3 to 5 10 then you need to stop the medicine i need toxin and toxicity is again a very common side effect which is more common with the peripheral neuropathy psychosis and generalized epileptic convulsion and list is enormous i need to give you a lot of side effect but believe me the serious side effect not very common rifampicin orange red discoloration of the body secretion is common it should not be taken as a side effect sometimes the patient will stop the medicine that aansu bhi fears bhi lal aa rahe hai stool bhi lal aa rahi hai probably he thinks that the blood is coming no it can give direct toxicity to the liver as well as git jaundice occur in less than 1% of patient if it occur occur within first 8 weeks of the disease other rare side effect are pseudo membranous colitis better renal syndrome acute adrenal insufficiency fixed the eruptions if you have seen give a lot of interaction with your art does i will not touch into that because it's a, almost a complete topic on its own pyrazinamide is rarely cause serious toxicity but hepatotoxicity can occur up to 10% as a single drug it doesn't cause much of hepatotoxicity when combined with the other drugs the hepatotoxicity increases because if ampicillin is a hepatotoxicity inh is hepatotoxic and pyrazinamide is hepatotoxic if all the three will be combined in fdc the chances of hepatitis uh, uh, hepatitis become high it can lead to the elevation of serum uric acid polyarthralgia is a very common side effect it it is common in around 40% but it do respond with the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs ethambutol it give decreased visual acuity loss of green color perception is very important if you are starting patient with ethambutol because if you are dealing with the farmer they will immediately tell you they cannot see the green color of the crops this is the first thing which will know it will is more common when we are using high doses that's why in the revised fdc the dose of ethambutol has already been reduced again i am repeating the dose has been reduced not due to its efficacy 35 mg per kg per kg body weight is more efficacious but it give more side effect that's why the dose has been reduced septomycin we can omit it <coughs> so uh, i will come to the last two slides In general, approach to the adverse adverse effect management includes timely diagnosis. You have to identify the the side effect has occurred, and we have to search for a sub possible alternative etiology or a contributing factor. We should not try to blame the drug. We should see the other reasons also. Correction of the underlying abnormality and elevation of symptoms, and reassuring the patient and the family. Changes to the TB regimen should be avoided unless serious or a refractory reaction occurs. reaction with intermittent drug regimen we will just omit it the only point which i want to give you is our aim is to give the provide safest most effective therapy in the shortest time multiple drugs we have to use in tuberculosis and multiple drugs mean more reaction more hypersensitive reaction and we have to handle these reaction and we have to ensure adherence to the patient and i will finish my talk here only
and if there is any question we can yeah so thank you sir thank you very much for your it was a very very precise to the point and informative talk thank you very much and uh, i don't think there is a need for summarizing it it was quite crystal clear so uh, before i open it to the house i would request dr prasad does he want any clarification about uh, about the line of management or is he clear uh, dr munjal sir i would like to ask you uh, like the regimen that dr prashad finally arrived at after reintroducing different drugs one by one uh, is that okay and can he continue with that and what duration if that's okay yes I want. I want to know whether three months of levofloxacin, pezanamide, and IUH plus six months of levofloxacin, plus IUH is okay. The experts. If you ask me as an expert, it's a very tricky question. If the patient has gained five kg weight, right, and the patient is responding to the treatment, then I will say I will endorse that you have taken a very right decision, right? Because there are limitations. What choice you have? You can use streptomycin, but with the ART, they don't advise streptomycin, right? So in the in this situation, you have taken the best option, and patient is responding very well. So I will not advise to change the regimen; just continue with that, right? Okay. Okay, sir. If the patient would have lost weight and not responding, then we would have thought of some other choices. Okay. Not in this okay. case. Thank you, sir. And rather, there was a question in the yes. chat. Yes. So there is a question, sir, from ARTC Tirupati. Does a single bullous lesion about one centimeter size count for stage four? If we don't have any other comorbidity or so other condition where the single bullous lesion can occur, then yes, we will label it as a four stage uh, skin reaction. Even a single bullous. Believe me, if we will talk about ten bullous. It will start from a first single bullet only. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, absolutely right, sir. One bullet region is actually enough. Ah, enough. Mm -hmm. There was another question about first line and second line LPA. I think. Yes. Somebody, somebody was suggesting that should we not get LPAs done for finding out levofloxacin and sensitivity. Sir, sir, if you'll ask me, if we have a facility, right? We should send all sample for LPA. But the thing is that. In a constrained situation, it's not possible to send each and every sample. If it's possible, my advice is yes, you should. Mm -hmm. Right, but you should realize that we are dealing with the extra pulmonary tuberculosis. In extra pulmonary tuberculosis, especially lymph node, finding a TB bacilli is probability is five to ten percent only. CB net may be negative, and LPA will work when the, there is a bacteria, but there is no bacteria. We will not able to see much of a result, but ideally, if you have a facility for LPA for the first and second line drugs, we should go for it. Thank you, sir. And just to re-emphasize a point that was made earlier, that fine needle aspiration is a very good sample for CBNAT. Agree. And uh, sometimes it happens there is a mismatch in where the FNA is done and where this how the CBNAT is carried, because in sputum it is very easy to give the patient a box or a bottle and tell them to bring sputum and deposit it in the cb nut lab but sometimes your fna is done in is done in a minor ot and the sister there might not know how to send a cb nut sample but i will request all art centers to kindly apprise their uh, facilities wherever fine needle aspiration of lymph nodes is done that five needle aspiration is not only to go for cytology but also for cb nut a little advocacy from your part would actually start this trend and this would be very, very helpful for management of TB. So uh, is there any other question, any other query that anybody would like to discuss? And rather, can we see any other question? Um, I'm nothing in the chat box, no. apart from these three, nothing. So actually it was such a clear talk. Uh, I mean, it's really very lucid. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Vara Prasad, sir, would you like to say something? No, madam. Yeah. So, sir, uh, Dr. Munjal, I think the presenter's uh, issue has been settled. 
And uh, sir from NRIAP, would you like to make some comment? Dharampal, sir. Dharampal, sir. Sir, so you're muted. Actually, it's very clear and concise and fact, most beautiful efforts. What I heard so in so many classes, what said also. Mm. Very yes. simple and very clear. Yes, sir. Agreed, sir. Totally agreed. So now I will pass on the mic and thank you once again for joining us. And we would be delighted to have you for more sessions uh, in initiative because you just uh, reach the crux of the matter so beautifully that we would request you to come again for other important topics for the initiative. And with this, can I hand over thank the you. mic to Anurag? Thank you, ma'am. Thank, ma thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks for taking out time. It's really nice of you, you know, to join every time and guide us all the way. And thank you so much, Munjal, sir, you, for taking such a thank wonderful you. session. It was really good. And we could see from the uh, results of the post-test also where, you know, <laughs> they've improved a lot in the post-test. So to the three post-test questions, the first question was uh, cutaneous adverse drug reaction to first-line ADT is present in. And this was one of our slide two. So the correct answer is 5.7 percent. The qu second question was uh, co commonest cutaneous adverse drug reaction to first line ADT is present in. The first option that is maculopapular rash is correct for this question. So these were two questions and I'm happy to announce that most of you have done it very nicely in the post test. With this, we would like to end the session with a big thanks uh, again to Dr. Prasad sir, uh, Upasna ma'am for her leadership always, and uh, Dr. Munjal for um, gracing us with his presence for this session. Thank you all. Thanks for joining.